Discovering God Through Nature and Art with Matushka Elisa. St. John of Kronstadt says, A true Christian behaves in this life so that it may be a preparation for the future one. Did you know there's a creature that spends most of its life in preparation? It's the dragonfly. Dragonflies lay their eggs in bodies of water or on floating plants. When one of those eggs hatches, out comes a nymph. Nymphs don't look much like their dragonfly parents, and their wings are pretty tiny and useless, but they won't need wings for their life underwater swimming around. Nymphs immediately become prey for animals like fish and toads. They need to grow bigger and stronger, so they become predators. A nymph's lower jaw unfolds in the blink of an eye to grab up prey like guppies or tadpoles. All of this eating and growing means they grow too big for their hard skin. And just like many other animals, they break out of their old skin. That's called molting. The nymphs molt many times in their underwater lives. This breaking out of something old and living in something new reminds me a lot of repentance. When we have sinned, we pray for God's help and we ask forgiveness. Do we shed our old sinful ways and wear a new clean spirit? Just like the nymph, don't we have to go through this process over and over so we can grow strong as Christians? It can take years of underwater preparation for a nymph to become an adult dragonfly. And when it's finally ready, it crawls out of the water up to a leaf and molts one last time, doing a backbend as it comes out of its old skin. It dries its new wings out for a few hours, and then it can fly. We have a lot of preparation in our Christian faith as well. How do you prepare for confession? How do you prepare for communion or Pascha? Do we all prepare for eternal life? Dragonflies have a whole new set of predators above water, like birds and lizards. And they also have new prey, like mosquitoes and moths. Dragonflies have huge eyes that can see in almost every direction. Best of all, they have four wings, which can move in different directions from each other at different times. This means a dragonfly can fly backwards, forwards, up and down. It can hover like a helicopter and make very quick turns. It can fly slowly or up to 35 miles per hour. It can take flight, grab a meal, and be back in one second flat. That's because a dragonfly doesn't waste time chasing its prey. It intercepts it by sensing where its prey is going and flying to the exact spot before the prey even arrives. Could we use this intercepting trick in our spiritual lives? Could we sense right or wrong in a situation before it even happens? Could we also be ready to help someone before they even ask? Warm days and a clean body of water makes dragonflies happy. They love to rest on plants by a pond and spread their wings in the sun or zoom low across the water. The presence of a lot of dragonflies tells us that an area is a healthy environment for plants and animals. Is this true of Christians as well? We like to surround ourselves with clean, pure thoughts, pure actions, and friends who have pure thoughts and actions as well. Let's draw a dragonfly in its habitat. We'll frame our scene in an interesting way by using a bowl to trace a circle. Now we'll draw a tiny circle for the head and a long pointed oval for the body. Start and end where the head and body meet. Make four long wings about the same length as the body. We'll have our dragonfly rest on a rock next to a pond. Start on the left and draw a crooked line through the top left wing, around the head, and through the top right wing. That's just part of the rock. The rest is out of the frame where we can't see it. A dragonfly's wings are transparent, which means we can see through them. But we also see a lot of tiny fragments in the wings. Let's simplify. Draw a line on the wings from tip to tip, and then add small lines going in all different directions. I did something similar in the painting you saw earlier. And for fun, I painted all the segments different colors to look like stained glass. We need some plant life at this pond. How about leaves hanging over the water? Over here are plants I've seen at the pond, cattails. 
Have you ever seen a lily pad at a pond? It's a circle with a little pie shape cut out. I'll put one below this cattail. If we add water lines, we can see our pond even better. How about more animal life? I added fish and the back of a turtle swimming out of frame, just passing by. Feel free to add your own choices of pond plants and wildlife. Here are my kids' versions of a dragonfly's busy habitat. I hope you have fun creating your own. Thank you so much for joining me, and be sure to keep a lookout for a dragonfly near you.